All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR, back at it again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Sony announcing their new line of gaming headsets and monitors. Now, this is an interesting move, right? Now, when Sony announces, right, that they are venturing into somewhat, you know, uncharted territories for them, and they are manufacturing products in a market that they usually don't venture into, you know, I get concerned and I get skeptical because there's a lot of, uh, you know, competition out there. And the um, this is essentially PC gaming, right? This is su support for PC gaming, which makes sense that they are doing th this when you look at it uh, in the way that obviously they're putting PlayStation games on PC now. Um, they own Evo, so I imagine that these monitors, most likely, I think the 1080p version of the monitors and 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 the um, whatever tier of the headsets will probably be used at Evo. I you know I, I assume that would be the obvious move that they would that they would make. So it makes sense in in that way that they're support they're putting their games on uh, PC. Um, you know they own Evo and all of those things. And this is a monitor obviously uh, for console gamers and PC gamers, right? If you're just a console gamer, I would say these monitors pretty much make no sense for you. You know, these aren't, you know, geared towards you. It makes no sense for you to really be interested in these monitors. But if you're a PC and console gamer, then it obviously makes sense um, because these monitors were specifically designed for the features that the PS5 support and or will support, right? Um, so, but there's a lot of competition out there. That's why I'm, you know, skeptical. You know, got to remember at one point, you know, Sony was the, you know, the electronic giant um, in that made products in like all the markets. Of course, they still make great cameras, uh, TVs, um, obviously, you know, consoles and, and, and a few other things that they're still great at. But we know they, you know, they they were killed and, you know, they killed off their and sold off their uh, la laptop line and, and a few other things they used to make. Sony used to make like every type of like electronic there was under the sun. And they tried to do, you know, too much at one point. And, um, you know, it didn't didn't, you know, work out well for them. So they had they had to focus uh, because a, a few of their products weren't were were lacking. Right. At, at one point, you know, many would say Sony had the best, you know, TVs on, on the market, but a bunch of of other uh, you know brands came and lapped them, such as uh, LG, right? So that's the only reason I get a little bit skeptical, and you know the, because of the history. You know they even did the the 3D TVs at one point in in gaming where they uh, had their uh, own 3D displays, and I don't know how I don't remember how successful that was during the PS3 era, but I imagine it wasn't very successful. You know that that whole 3D TV thing faded very quickly i can't believe that, that that gaming even really went through that that time and you know that 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 little phase where everything was about 3d even in the movies and everything like that right so i'm going to talk about you know the the gaming headsets and the monitors i'm going to you know kind of uh briefly go over the specs but there's a bunch of channels you know uh, that have reviewed this already uh reviewed the actual product because they got plenty of time to use it and go into the specs in depth so i'm just going to mention them but i'm not going to spend too much time on them just going to you know tell you my thoughts and I'm not in the market for a monitor right now, but probably around the time where maybe around October um, and the, the 40 series of uh, NVIDIA cards come out, that's probably when I'll want to um, upgrade my monitor. Right now, I, I have a, um, a, a Acer Predator um, XB27. Yeah, Acer Predator XB273 uh, 3K. That's I think that's I'm pretty sure that's the model. And I got two of them. Um, and at one point, this was a bunch of years ago, though. Uh, at one point, these were like the best, you know, PC monitors on the market at, at one point, like I said, a long time ago. But I've had my eyes on the the LG, uh, LG GP950B. It's crazy that I can remember all these models. That's what I've had my eye on. And that's what I plan to buy a little bit further down the line. Like I said, in October, you know, that's that's the uh, LG's um, HDMI 2.1 um, 4K monitor. So that's what I'm that's what I'm, I'm looking at. And based on the reviews, um, based on the reviews of this 
the, these Sony uh, monitors. These seem to be pretty good. It's something to consider, but based on everything I've read and done my research, I, me personally, I still think I'm definitely leaning towards uh, the LG monitor, but to my, I guess to my good, the, the good surprise, these Sony monitors, by all accounts, are really good gaming monitors. Um, probably not so much the headsets. I would personally recommend nobody buy these headsets. That's just me. But the monitors seem to be actually really good monitors entering the market. So there's three models of, of the headsets. I'm going to start out with those. First of all, before that, Inzone, I hate that name. We are not in the early 2000s. Why is your line of gaming products named Inzone? That is a horrible name. Fire the marketing person who came up with that name. The that's terrible. I hate it. Right? It's it sounds so corny and and like tacky and cheap. Um, but there's three tiers of the of the headsets there, which I find to be a little bit redundant. Just have your low tier and your and your premium tier. There's no need for that that middle tier in my opinion. Um, there's the H3, H7, and H9. Just have the H3 and the H9, bro. Um, just to go over the premium uh, model, like like I said, if you want to see the the difference of all all the different models, you can go look that up. There's comparisons out there that show you what each one has. But the H9, which is which is like the uh, what does that cost? Like uh, I didn't have the the price right here, um, but I think that's around two forty nine or something like that. The H9 wireless U USB C fast charging forty hour battery life. Um, three, uh, 360, de 60 degree spatial audio. Um, so, so there's spatial audio, right? And the PlayStation supports 3d audio. I'm not an expert when it comes to spatial audio and 3d audio. From what I understand is 3d audio is a type of spatial audio. Um, if I have that correct and one isn't necessarily better than another they just work different differently when it comes to delivering sound when it comes to depth and perception and all that stuff that's my understanding i'm not an audiophile i do you know know i would say i have a good knowledge base on when it comes to you know headsets and gaming headsets we all know gaming headsets typically don't deliver the best sound and audio we know that right if you want the best audio it's not going to come from a gaming headset but in my experience gaming headsets with compatibility tend to still be better for you know your consoles and for your pc um than the a premium uh, uh, you know your regular premium headset that's designed for like music and your phone and, and all that stuff it, it's usually just easier and because of the it's because it's designed for a console but they're obviously not going to have um the best the best audio but there are some really premium uh, uh, headphones that will get you near to that that you would get from a an actual uh, you know uh, headset outside of gaming. The ones I have my eye on that I want to buy are the Steel Series uh, Arctis Nova. I, why do, can y'all like shorten these goddamn names? Steel Series Arctis Nova Pro Wireless ones. Although oh, those are like they're like three hundred and forty nine dollars, but they seem to be amazing, and those are the ones I plan to buy like once again a little bit further down the line probably around you know september october those have like 3d audio they're um you know they they're they have like a ps5 and an xbox version the, the xbox version works if i remember this correctly the xbox version works both on the ps5 and the xbox but the ps5 version comes with something that only works on the ps5 i can't remember it's, it's something like that there's but it's better to buy the i think the xbox version of the headset because it supports both um so if you're looking for a premium headset i recommend looking up that one the steel series arctis nova pro wireless right um then these i let me just say i hate the design i think the design of these things are disgusting they're hideous i've seen how they look in reviews and they're huge they have this like this spherical design where it's like listen you want your headsets to be like kind of you want the you know the the air pads to be fl as flat as can be no one wants this spherical design it's ugly it's pointless i i, I hate it honestly um they have i think 40 millimeter drivers uh, the bigger the driver, 
um, doesn't necessarily mean the all the sound is going to be better. But I've tried headsets with hundred millimeter drivers, and it doesn't like I said it doesn't automatically mean it's going to be better, but it helps. It accommodates um, better sound. But most uh, gaming headsets, especially, are going to be like forty millimeter drivers. Uh, nylon ear cups, um, bi-directional, you know, they have microphones, but nobody uses mic. Nobody should be using a microphone um, that's coming out of your headset. Nobody should be doing that, okay? Unless you actually plug in your, your headphones to the console still and talk in game chat do people still do I, I i haven't done that since like the beginning of last generation people use discord now i know people miss game chat and everything like that but yeah i i'm the microphone really isn't a, a factor when it when it comes to buy, when it comes to buying headsets uh it has its own software and everything like that it comes out july uh 2022 the software is you know so you can customize it with the uh, spatial audio and everything like that um like i said I'm not going to spend too much time more talking about these uh, talking about these headsets. Um, I would just recommend you buy a different headset, right? That's all. That's all I'm gonna say about it. I don't think Sony makes good gaming headsets. What was the one they made? Because they had a line before before this one that they made for the PS5 also that they usually make for the PlayStation consoles. Those weren't good. These aren't gonna be the greatest. I wouldn't recommend them. Obviously, that's just my opinion. I haven't tried them, but that's my opinion. There's there's better, much better out there already on the market. Now to get to these monitors. Right, so these monitors, um, the M9, there's two models, the M9 and the M3. The main difference is 4K and 1080p. And the refresh rate, I think, of the M3 goes higher than the M9, right? Um, the M3 is what I would imagine that they use at tournaments um, because there's really no reason that, you know, a lot of these term tournaments really need to play or support 4K. Um, so, I, but maybe they do use the M9s. I don't know, but I would I would assume most of the uh, most of the like tournaments, if they have them at the tournaments, they would have the M3 models. Uh, so 27 inches, obviously, which is typical for gaming monitors. I know a lot of like console guys looking. They look at that 27 inches and they're like, "What? You're that's like playing on a tablet." When obviously it's meant for PC gaming, and most PC gamers are sitting right in front of their monitors. It's not meant for people who like play on their couch <laughs> and um you know their tv is like 10 15 feet away from them however far far it is it's obviously not meant for that so 27 inches to me is perfect for uh for uh you know mo for gaming monitors i don't play on any anything bigger than that i i i wouldn't um it's just just no point Right? I don't even like playing on bigger monitors. I have an LG C1 literally sitting right above me. I have my monitors in front of me, and my LG C1 is right above you know, the, the, the camera. It's, um, and I don't even game on it like that. I, I have a PS, PS5 in my bedroom, a Switch in my living room, and I do very casual gaming, like if I'm playing with my wife on those, but I haven't seriously played on a, played on a TV in a very long time. I just heavily prefer monitors. I don't like big displays to game on. Um, so like I said, the M9, 27 inches, 4K, uh, refresh rate goes up to 144 hertz. I'm not sure if that's in overdrive mode because monitors um, have these, you know, for people who don't know, have a mode in which uh, it's like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's just slipping my mind. Uh, pretty much it's it's a mode that like, it's the, when you turn on the, the most optimal and fastest um, setting, right? And most when they when they're like advertising these monitors, they'll they'll tell you certain specs about it. But the but some of these specs are only when you turn on uh, overdrive or OD. Like they'll say, for example, um, it's it has a one millisecond uh, response time, which was what they say about this M9. But that one millisecond response time is really in overdrive uh, when. The, the response time might actually be like four or five. I know the monitors I have now, I believe it's by default, it's 120. It's, it's the refresh rate is 120. But when you overclock it or put it in overdrive mode, it goes up to 144. So that's how a lot of them like advertise uh, these, um, these, uh, these monitors. So sometimes you need 
act, to actually put it in the right option uh, overdrive to have the, res the proper response time and the refresh rate. Uh, it has VRR support, obviously. We know that came to PlayStation re re, uh, recently. Um, audio, um, excuse me, auto HDR tone mapping that automatically um, optimizes your HDR settings for you. Uh, I don't think the, L the LG monitor that I was talking about, I don't think it does that. So that's one feature that it does that the uh, LG doesn't. Supports G-Sync and FreeSync, which is great. It has HDR 600, um, which Better performing monitors have at least 600, uh, you know, peak, um, but the top performers have like a thousand nits. So it's kind of, you know, average middle of the pack, which you would expect. Um, has rear lighting, two HDMI 2.1 ports, uh, which obviously supports that high refresh rate. One display port. Um, it has full array local uh, dimming backlight. Uh, which is obviously, you know, important for contrast cr contrast ratios and, um, you know, for dark scenes, you know, because it dims certain parts and everything like that. My biggest problem in this, some people, this may not be a big deal for uh, some people, is it can't rotate 90 degrees, right? Um, so a lot of people have like their monitors. One would, would be, uh, one would be uh, what, you know how you typically have the monitor and the other one would be uh 90 degrees especially if you're streaming and it also helps you uh save you know some room on your desk if the the monitors aren't uh both just not is that portrait i always confuse portrait mode and and the other the other one but yeah some people turn one monitor sideways and have uh one monitor the regular way and my monitors in front of me right now, I have them both in, in the typical way, but when I was gonna buy new monitors, I wanted to have one, you know, uh, to rotate 90 degrees. And one of the biggest problems I have with my current monitors, which the uh, which the Sony M9s actually do better, is the the is how much space my monitors take up, right? These M9s take up less space um, with the stand, right? My monitors, literally, it's the most ridiculous thing, right? And I hate about it is, um, the stands, cause I don't have them mounted. The stands are literally as wide, almost as wide as the freaking monitor, right? So you, ha which is, com you, which is stupid, right? You don't need, I don't know why they designed it that way. You don't need all the legs to come out as wide as the monitor to support the monitor. When you look at the design of these, uh, of these Sony, um, and I should have been, you know, scrolling. Uh, when you look at the design uh, of these Sony monitors, you can see it's a lot more compact, right? The legs and the support, it's a lot more compact. Uh, and obviously these are the headsets. Apologies, I wasn't scrolling earlier. Uh, and these are some of the specs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you can see earlier, that's what I was talking about with the, with the design, these like almost... I guess you can, I guess they're oval, uh, and, and the, ugh, this looks so ugly. This is a true, this almost looks like a mock-up. I can't believe this is real. It's like they went for that futuristic design, but it looks like tacky futuristic. This is ugly. This is ugly to me. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I, I like the design. It's sleek and smooth and, you know, the legs are compact and don't, don't come out, uh, too far in, in front. Cause mine on these monitors, they come out this way, Right which is stupid. They, it has like this little uh, front support, but that doesn't come out too far. And then the other legs go, you know, so, you know, to the side. So that's, that's cool. Um, and this monitor is $900. Um, it's releasing summer 2022. Once again, people, you know, some people look at that price and $900 for a monitor. And I'm like, that's, that's not crazy. That's actually competitive. That's for, for a monitor, uh, a HDMI 2.1 monitor that has all these all these features. That's very market level price. That's that's normal. But especially console gamers, once again, are looking at this like, oh, I can get an, an LG C1 that's you know so and so inches, 48 inches, 50, uh, you know whatever amount of inches. Because you know people who typically don't play on PC think bigger is better, and it's not. Um, they look at they. That's how they you know look at it when. When you look at LG's uh, HDMI 2.1 uh, 
2.1 HDMI monitors, that launched at like $900. Sony's, uh, it's not Sony, Samsung's, what is that, the G7, that is a little bit cheaper. I, I, I think that is missing a few features that, that this and the LG have though. And I think that monitor's curved also. Um, but it's definitely a good monitor. That is a, a cheaper alternative. But listen, with I've had Acer and Asus monitors that literally launched at like $1,500, and I bought them at $1,500 plus. And they were like, at, at, at that point of release, like the best monitors that you can buy on the market. And so what, what I'm saying is, is this 900 price point that some people are shocked by, that's a great price. It's a great price. Um, and if you want to, you know, check out some more um, specific stuff about these, uh, about this monitor, uh, TechSpot did a, obviously did a very um, in-depth uh, review. Uh, one thing I hate about monitors is the way you have to navigate the freaking menu, as you could see here. You have to put your hand in the back of the monitor and like, uh, it's a little navigational button you push up and down and I hate it. It's it's the best way for you know um, for monitors, but I ain't gonna lie. I wish these monitors had a remote because it, it's not it. I don't care. Like certain manufacturers and brands have made it easier, and but it still sucks. It's still it's still not not great. Um, so yeah, this this talks about the you know the uh, you know the lighting and the hertz and the peak brightness and. Down here, this is about the refresh rate, and you know you could kind of see that the the M9 kind of kind of lands right in the the middle for a lot of these other monitors on the market with the with similar uh, with the same size and and 4K and everything like that. You know, so it's a decent performer. It seems to be a you know a some a pretty decent performer. Um, it's, you know, when it comes to certain things, it's clearly not the best. It lands, it lands pretty close to the, the LG that I actually want in, in some categories, uh, like contrast ratio. So, um, yeah, it seems to be a pretty decent monitor. Um, so, yeah, I, I think... If this was an, before the reviews, I was skeptical, but based on what a lot of these reviews are saying, listen, it's it's a it's a good monitor, and this is a good move uh, by PlayStation to make a push for PC gaming, to um, you know, to obviously support their games coming to PC, to support their events because they own Evo. Yeah, it makes sense as long as they don't go crazy, in my opinion, with making too many models of these then I'm you know then I'm fine with it like I said I feel like they did a little bit too much with the with the headsets you definitely don't need that middle that M7 should have just made the M3 and the M9 just like you did with the monitors and as long as they don't venture too far out there like I said and actually make quality products because that was their problem before they tried to be you know a, a you know a jack of all trades master of none and just make um, middling products in, in some markets and you know that's gonna make you suffer but this this is smart I think this works and oh yeah like I said the the m9 is 144 Hertz the m3 is 240 Hertz um, so yeah obviously it's a that's a big jump um, but 144 is is all I need and I definitely need that 4k so yeah um, Summary, the monitor seems to be pr uh, pretty good. Headsets, even though those are getting decent decent reviews, they're not as uh, respectively good as you know their monitor counterparts. So yeah, those are my thoughts on uh, Sony unveiling these. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're interested in, in buying these. And yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.